Hello fellow fish reefers. Here we are off Goleta, California with a film crew from UCSB Environmental Studies. And this is lead photographer Maya. As you can see the kelp has already reached more than seven feet tall, 12 feet tall in some places. And this is just in one month since the last time we were here and the plants were just a foot tall. It shows the incredible tenacity and resilience Macrocystis pyrophora, the fastest growing plant on planet Earth, actually has. Despite warmer summertime water temperatures and heavy turbidity or sediment in the area, the growth of the kelp on the sea caves persists. This is a small school of Bellina rockfish. And just since a month ago, we've seen a dramatic increase in the number and variety of fish species on the reef. We expect the kelp to reach the sea surface in about 30 days time, just before the opening of the lobster season. It's mixed with the understory, which is the small brown algae called laminaria, which grows to about two feet tall. We had tough conditions this day, and we hope that as time goes on, we'll be able to capture beautiful conditions in November and really show what the reefs can do. Here's a nice perch. A lot of the small growth has disappeared since the last filming known as biofilm so that's either due to water temperature or the biofilm has converted into full-size plants at this point the term macrocystis comes from the giant bladders or the giant cysts that pull the oxygen directly out of the ocean and form the air bladders and that's what elevates the giant kelp to the surface so quickly and keeps it within the photo range so it can harvest the sunlight. There's good kelp years and bad kelp years. Luckily this is a good kelp year. It's a La Nina condition so we have cooler than average water temperatures. There's a giant school of sardines swimming by which is an incredibly good sign because that brings in the yellowtail and the white sea bass and the giant black sea bass and the big calico bass. So clearly the reef is establishing. Soon we'll be able to swim between the large kelp stocks as the number of stipes increase. Those are the actual physical plant structures that come off of the sea cave. Now this is a yellowtail rockfish, sometimes known as an olive rockfish. When I was a kid, we called these Johnny Bass. And they get about 18 inches long. Now this is a boccaccio or a salmon grouper, which historically was a listed species. So it's really encouraging to see that fish that were previously listed as threatened are using the reef in their juvenile state. So when they're small, they seek refuge in the reef and it gives them a place to grow to where they can survive predation and then move out into the deeper water and become full grown rockfish. I guess this Johnny Bass is a self-assigned tour guide of the Goleta Sea Cave Reef. He's showing us around, or she. He's saying on the left over there is where I almost got eaten by a lingcod last week. And over to the right is where I almost got eaten by a halibut the week before that. And as you can see, the Johnny Bass really understands that the reef is home, that it's a place to be protected. There's one more shot of the Johnny Bass heading off into the ether. And there's the lifting eye that we use to lower the sea caves and the two five inch holes that are used 
to evacuate the air as they're being lowered. And there's some more perch in the water column mixed with really quite tall kelp plants. We want to see more stipes in the kelp plants as they mature, which again are those individual stalks. A full-size, robust, giant kelp plant has as much as 200 stipes, but a really healthy one is about 20 stipes. And that's what we hope to see in the coming months. There's one more shot of Macrocystis pyrophora and a chucklehead rockfish or a white belly rockfish, also known as a copper rockfish, making use of the inside of the sea cave. And I would like to thank everybody for helping ocean life thrive.